Level by Level Gaming, and here is my weekly update on the custom menu here. Now, uh, once again, if you like what I'm doing here, you like my videos, please hit the subscribe button, like button, hit me up in the comments, let me know what you think. So, one of the first things you notice about my new menu here is I do have this icon clipping that is going on here. And uh, simply resizing these, I've done a lot of stuff, not going to go into extreme detail to try to get that not to happen. And I finally, as you can see here, these clip, but this is the icon I worked on getting it not to happen. And as you can see, there is no clipping. Also, you notice this little jump mechanic. Um, these icons, when they do that jump, it cuts the bottom half off. And I know what that's for on the original icons. That was to create like this little shadow effect on the table here. Um, I really had to work on not just getting this to not to clip, but also not to do this shadow effect here. So that is the process that I'm going to duplicate with all of these icons. So what I got to get this to work, I'm going to apply to all of these icons throughout the week. All right, let's get right into the new emulators I've added for this week. And that is going to be, I believe I stopped with the Amiga 500 here, which I did fix these icons. Uh, got these right off of Jack's menu from Dean Unity. So uh, thank you for those icons. Um, just repurposed them. So we do have a Commodore 64 here, Vetrex, and Wonder Swan. Now, Wonder Swan, this icon was actually on the download. It is a color icon. It was roughly the same size, so I just kind of plugged it in just to get a feel for how that works. Uh, that would actually probably have to be converted over to black and white um, just so I can keep the same theme here. So let's check out the Commodore 64. And there you go. We have full screen resolution. We can go into the menu here, auto start image, select our ROMs. I only have one on here to test and that's Commando 1986. Give it a few seconds. It's searching for loading, ready, and running. So this process just takes a few seconds. And there you go. We have Commando 1986 going now. You do have to enter a virtual keyboard here because in order to play uh, first player or player one, you do have to go to F1 to get that to happen. So let's go on over here to the F1. It wants a name. Let's just pick the first thing that it'll let me select, which is an H. No, that's not right. A P. And let's go to return. Exit out of the virtual keyboard. And now we are playing Commando. So on the Commodore 64. So that is just a preview of that. Now, let's quit the emulator. Um, something that I wanted to ask you guys and get a poll opinion is with this Commodore 64, the parent emulator for this is Vice. And Vice just doesn't emulate Commodore 64. It emulates a lot of different things. I just put this quick connect in the menu system here for the Commodore Commodore 64 because it's, it is popular, it is recognizable, it's the one I think of when I think of the Commodore system. Um, so what I can do, and I just want to ask you guys what you guys think, is I can make individual um, icons and make something that just connects to each one of the vice emulators or I can uh, make it where this isn't just isn't Commodore it's 64 it's Commodore you click into that and instead of having one of these start buttons here maybe I could have the Commodore 64 the Commodore 64 direct TV and so on and so forth because there are several other Commodore based emulators that are part of that vice download so just let me know what you think um, Basically, if you want me to keep it just one icon for each system that that emulator runs or have one parent directory 
that goes into a list of all of the different Commodore emulators. Just a thought. Let me know what you think. Hit me up in the comments, and I will look at that and make a decision how I want to go with that. Uh, Vetrix. Vetrix was also kind of weird. Um, I love this emulator. I mean, I love this system. Uh, haven't loaded any ROMs in this thing yet, uh, just to test it. But it does come with a built-in game, which is like Asteroids. It's their version of it, I guess. Uh, didn't know much about the ROMs and where to put them, so I'll have to learn as I mess around with this thing some more. But what I do like is check this out. It puts it in this elongated view. And there you go. So we are playing the game. It's really hard trying to do it on this camera. But this is just to show you, just to um, give you a preview of what's happening here. So, and there you go. So we have that emulator. Now, uh, if you've noticed, it is kind of clipped. Let's go to the menu here. It is clipped around these edges. It is almost full screen resolution, but I found that whenever I force this thing into the full screen resolution, like I've done with the Commodore and everything else that I've done so far, for whatever reason, it super slowed down the system uh, it just didn't quite work right and that is going to be a bug or a kink that I'm gonna have to work out but if I had to leave it just like this it's almost full screen re resolution it is very playable and it is acceptable to me um, let me know what you think if I can work out the bug where I can get it full screen um, and it runs the way it's supposed to then we'll go from there but it is a working emulator and um, you can play the games on it. So let me exit out of this. And now, here's where I'm gonna show you, um, I kinda left this the way that it is. Whenever I click on here, Wonder Swan just crashes. So um, I'm working out the kinks on that. I know that it works. I know that it's a working emulator, or at least to the uh, level of completion that the original person made it so but as you can see it crashes now that's going to highlight what I want to move into next and what I want to move into next is some of the apps that I've incorporated don't tell me it just crashed the reset button there that would be very unfortunate okay so it did crash but that's okay we reset it and it doesn't do that very often guys um, so I'm just gonna let that go so under my apps here you can see that I've added Dingux commander and the overclock so let's just hit up the overclock here when you go into overclock you can see that the current clock speed is, is 528 megahertz here. Um, that is stock, that is standard. If I wanted to bump this up and play around with it to increase performance, especially when we start getting into those PlayStation 1 games and emulators which is coming down the line, um, some of your Super Nintendo and stuff that kind of lags, you can actually go through and it gives you the options here so let's just say we want to bump it up by 10. This is still set as X, Y, A, B, um, which is not the same options here, but these keys directly coordinate with this here anyways. So let's go with plus 10. Well, what was that plus? Yeah, um, let's just bump it up a couple more times over 600. All right, let's just leave it right there. So I'm gonna, I just bumped it up to 600. I'm going to press start to apply it and select exit. So now my device is overclocked and is running at a higher clock speed. 
So you will have to play with that. Um, I've get different opinions on what's stable and what's not. Um, I can chime in with that as I play with this a little more and get a little more experience with the overclocking. Now, Dingux Commander. So if you remember um, that Wonder Swan was crashing on me, that means I've got something wrong in my coding here. I've got something wrong in the paths. There's something I've done that I'm gonna have to backtrack, dig in and figure out why it's crashing in that menu. But just to test the emulator itself, I can go to Dingux Commander here. And this is a file explorer. So I'm gonna go back all the way to where I see mount. I'm gonna go with, this would be my external memory. This would be my internal memory. Go in here. I'm gonna go to the root files where I have that emulator. And that is going to be, let's see, Wonderswan. All right, under Wonderswan, you can see that I have my different, uh, I have my shell extension here. I have my .dge. I'm gonna run with my shell extension because that is my corrected file to get it in the right resolution. And here we go, we can execute. And as you can see, I have a working Wonderswan uh, emulator and with the game that just comes with it. So I just exited out um, on accident. Let's try that one more time. So up, up, mount, memory, game, the new emulators, oh, wrong thing, new emulators I'm adding here, uh, let's go down to Wonderswan, and my extension here, and uh, we have, like I said, a way to go in directly like a file explorer and execute it inside the internal memory card that is what Dingux Commander can do for you. It can go in and uh, directly select stuff and work it from there. So, this Wonder Snake here. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to show you that. Uh, I wanted to show you the apps that I've added, it's the emulators. I'm still working on that Wonder Swan. Um, I do have a ton of other stuff down coming down the line. I've been looking at your comments in my videos and I've been looking at all the feedback. Thank you guys so much for telling me which alternative emulators work better than the ones that are stock. So I still have that coming. Um, once I get these icons cleaned up, get the, uh, new emulators added to this that I want to add to it. I'm actually reaching the, the end of the line. I've been digging through open handhelds. There's also some, there's a French website that has a whole lot of emulators for this. Um, and I'm really digging through those, trying to find and add to the lineup here. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Um, that's where I'm at with this. And what I'll end with is I'll end with the final thing that I've done. And as you can see, no Street Fighter backsplash on exit. So that has been removed. All right, this has been Level by Level Gaming. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next week for the next video.